This book is called Scallywag and it's by Jeanette Rowe. Orlando was enormous, just like his own Louis. Together, they spent the afternoons working in the garden. Then Marcello would bring them a plate of salami and cheese on crispy fresh bread. You're getting fat, Orlando, scolded Marcella. Don't you think the cat is getting fat too? No, no, Louis would say. He's not fat. He's just got big bones like me. Not far away lived Winsome and her cat Daryl. Win and Daryl were made for each other. Win liked to cook and Daryl loved to eat. Every evening after Wynne played bowls or visited the club, she and Daryl would sit down with a special dinner and watch their favourite television show. Two streets away was Bert's house. He had lived alone for many years since May died. Then Tubby moved in. Every morning they sat together on the front veranda to eat their breakfast. After they had read the paper... Tubby went for a walk while Bert got on with his housework. Around the corner, in a house next to the park, Sylvia prepared lunch for her children. Their cat, Brutus, loved lunch times. Don't feed Brutus, he's getting too fat, Sylvia would say, pretending to be angry, but the children could never resist. Then one day, a strange thing happened. Tubby didn't show up for his breakfast. Brutus missed his lunch. Orlando couldn't be found anywhere at afternoon tea time and Daryl failed to arrive for his usual special dinner. Everyone was worried. Bert shouted and rustled the newspaper all day long. Sylvia beat her soup pot with a spoon and called and called. Louis sang out and waved a salami so the scent would travel on the breeze and Wynne whistled and shone her torch around the yard. But as the day ended, there was still no sign of any of their cats. Early the next morning, each of them set out to search the streets. Marcella gave Louis a bag filled with little pieces of Orlando's favourite cheese and salami. Just in case he's hungry, she said. Poor Louis, he was so worried. He must be starving by now, he said, a whole day without food. Winsome searched her own street first, but no one had seen Daryl. Terrible thoughts began to creep into her mind. What if he's been hit by a car or chased by a dog or stolen? As Bert searched the neighbourhood, he tried to imagine what it would be like to be a cat. He looked inside rubbish bins, under bushes, but there was still no sign of Tubby. Sylvia and the children walked and beat the pot. The neighbours looked at them as if they were crazy, but none of them cared. They knew Brutus would know the sound and come running straight away. Then, just when everything seemed hopeless, Daryl! Brutus! Tubby! Orlando! They all called as they ran towards their cats, but there was only one cat. One big, fat cat. Winsome looked at Louis. Louis looked at Bert. Sylvia looked at the cat and the cat looked embarrassed. Oh, Lando, how could you do this to me? cried Louis. Is it any wonder you're so fat, Daryl? said Wynne crossly. What are we going to do? said Bert. We can't divide him into four. The cat gulped at the thought. We'll have to do something, said Sylvia, trying to be practical. Look, it's nearly lunchtime and our house isn't far. Why don't we all go there? We can work this out over a nice bowl of soup. Soup, said Louis, smiling at last. Marvellous idea. The cat smiled too. Don't you look so hopeful, you big glutton, said Sylvia to the cat. You'll be lucky to get a stick of celery. So Sylvia made a delicious lunch, which everyone enjoyed. Well... Nearly everyone. Then after lunch, they discussed the problem of the cat. Why don't we just keep sharing him, suggested Louis. Yeah, why not? We did it before, said Wynne. He'd have to go on a diet, warned Sylvia. Yes, if we all keep feeding him, he'll explode, laughed Bert. It 
took all afternoon to plan a special diet for their cat. In the mornings, Bert was to give Tubby only one saucer of skim milk. At lunchtime, Sylvia and the children were allowed to give Brutus four cat biscuits and a big hug. Louis promised to give Orlando just one piece of cheese at afternoon tea time. And for dinner, Wynne agreed to cook Daryl a small serve of lean meat with no gravy. It was almost dark when Sylvia's new friends left to go home. No one noticed that the cat was missing. Bert thought Tubby had gone with Wynne. Sylvia thought Brutus must have gone with Bert. Wynne was sure Daryl had gone with Louis. And Louis was convinced that Orlando had stayed at Sylvia's. But Scallywag knew where he was. And that's the end of the story.